Hello, Ramesh Thakur. Now, I'm sure many people will know you. You're a regular here at Spectator TV. But of course, there's always, there are always new people who are switching on for the first time. Uh, so Ramesh, I want to talk to you today about the UN because you worked for a long time at the UN and so you bring an insider's perspective to it. Um, can you tell me what did you do when you were at the UN? What's your experience there? Well, thanks, Rebecca. Good to be back on uh, Specky TV. Uh, first of all, I'm a career academic, but my professional career has actually been devoted to UN-related issues, uh, and therefore I've worked at the intersection of uh, academic scholarship and policy-oriented uh, research. As part of that, uh, for about 10 years, just nine years actually, I worked for the United Nations at the United Nations University uh, as the senior vice rector at the rank of assistant secretary general. And as part of that, I actually wrote uh, Secretary General Kofi Annan's second reform report uh, back in uh, 2002. So yes, I know a lot about the United Nations. I was responsible for uh, the UN University's liaison with the United Nations. And as part of that, my remit was to bring together the world of scholarship literally from around the world uh, and see how we could harness that to UN policymaking, that's international policy, where we advised member governments. Well, that's uh, fascinating. And uh, were you based in New York? For parts, uh, but my headquarters was actually Tokyo. That's the headquarters of the United Nations University, uh, which in my time had 14 institutes around the world. So think of faculties, but just think that the faculties are geographically distributed around the world. And one of the new institutes we started, by the way, uh, was in global health, uh, located in Kuala Lumpur. So, Ramesh, a lot of people are very suspicious about the UN. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of this because it's just people for a long time, you know, I have heard sort of people grumbling, they don't trust the UN. Now that was before the pandemic. Now, uh, my impression is that um, that's got a lot worse since then. Have you encountered this kind of um, uh, view, a sort of a suspicion about the UN? Uh, is that something that you came across or in the circles that you move in, are people sort of quite comfortable with the UN and so forth? Uh, no, no, no. That's a very common reaction. It's been there for a long time, as you said. Uh, and indeed, that reform report that, that I wrote in the name of the Secretary General, we actually addressed that and substantiated a lot of the criticisms. Uh, in terms of the excessive bureaucracies, in terms of the wasteful expenditure, and so on. But one of the things that people don't realize is that those who control the United Nations are not the international civil servants, but the member states. In fact, uh, now Lord Mark Malik Brown, when he moved over from the third ranking position in the UN, which was as head of UNDP, the development program, to be uh, the deputy secretary general, the number two ranking, he actually said publicly at the time, he had not realized that his discretion to do things as head of UNDP was bigger uh, than the Secretary General Kofi Annan has to do things with the UN Secretariat. Uh, for example, we asked for a 10% latitude uh, in reallocating posts within the allocated budget, which is set by member states for the following two years. And the member states said no. Uh, so you can't anticipate what will be needed and our request was not that we would exceed the budget, but within that we would re reallocate posts from one department to the other as need arose. And the member states said no. So that's a small example, but it's a telling example. And people don't realize that the most important people to control the UN are actually its member states. The budget is apportioned in the General Assembly. The most important members of the United okay. Nations are the permanent members of the Security Council, of whom through three are Western states, uh, that's the United States, UK and France, and the other two, of course, are Russia and China. They are the key actors, not the UN's civil servants.